Spatial Experience A fundamental aspect of the book is Bacon's explanation of spatial experience. He defines architecture as an articulation of space so as to produce in the participator a definite space experience. In relation to previous and anticipated space experiences, capturing how buildings define and make a space comprehensible and articulate a notion of time, via the lived experience of moving from one space to the next. Bacon believes that involvement is key to spatial experience. Architecture is to be in not just to look at, and there are eight key urban design elements that help to achieve this. Meeting the sky, building elements to create skylines and identity. Meeting the ground, to give a quality of stability and definition. Points in space, which interplay to create tension and dynamic spatial harmony. Recession planes, framing and creating drama, scale, and position for the viewer. Design in depth, creating perspective and a sense of movement within space. Ascent and descent, levels producing anticipation and pleasure. Convexity and concavity, the interplay of positive and negative forms to shape volume. Relationship to people, human scale design to connect and involve. Meeting the sky. Bacon points to Acroterion of Greek temples as an excellent example of how buildings and built form meet the sky. He points to a revival of this style in the Baroque and Victorian period. And comments that this element is an identical to a city skyline, which he identifies as a city's signature. Meeting the ground. Bacon argues that this second element is where built mass meets the ground to act as a pedestal for built form. This pedestal allows the involved to scale buildings and relate their size to one another. Bacon points to buildings that utilized staircases as pedestals in the Renaissance period, and notes that many of these were placed at the focal point of cities, such as city squares and town commons. Points in space Bacon's third element is used to create tension and relief between elements. He argues great places have prominent points in space that are identifiable work to interplay with other elements. Recession planes are used in urban form to heighten dramatic power of structures. This is done by allowing the involved viewer to have a reference to scale, frame and position relative to the viewer. Design in depth. Relating two arches to one another allows the involved viewer to understand the depth of buildings, provide scale for that depth and identify egress areas. Designing in depth creates urban movement. That allows space to be understood from multiple perspectives. It also lends further credence to the determination and coherence of scale. Ascent and Descent By varying levels of floor, designers have the ability to toy with emotions of the involved viewer. Upward movement has can symbolize power, achievement, or anticipation. Downward movement can symbolize the depth and grandeur of space. Bacon argues that as citizens change levels, new aspects of the urban form reveal themselves and as mechanical design elements work to replicate sequences of urban form. Furthermore, these two aspects of the same element exist in duality and also aid in creating spatial tension. Convexity and concavity Much like ascent and descent, these mirrored aspects of the same element heavily rely on one another. Working with the depth of built form, convexity, and concavity act as connector and divider of urban space. They inform the volume of urban form and can be taken advantage of to make urban form more dramatic. Relationship to people One of the most critical pieces of Bacon's work is the identification and reiteration of built form's relationship to man. Bacon argues that our urban built form should be reflective of our human scale and aid in establishing a connection between built environment and man. If this is done artfully, buildings and their relationship to man benefit urban form.